Good morning. Welcome to St. Bartholomew's. We're so glad to see all of you here this morning, those of you who have joined us in person and those who have joined us online. Um, our opening hymn is hymn 213. If you would please stand as you are able. <laughs> Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that he leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Reading from the book of Acts. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to the uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them step by step saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, the voice answered from heaven, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand now and recite with me Psalm 148, found in your leaf insert or on page 805 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will recite responsibly by whole verse. Alleluia. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you angels of his. Praise him, all the hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He made them stand fast forever and ever. He gave them a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Iron hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing his will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, 
princes and all rulers of the world. Young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted. His splendor is over earth and heaven. He has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near him. Hallelujah. Father, and, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy, to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was, as it was in the beginning, and now, now and will, and will be, forever. be forever. Amen. Please be seated. The epistle reading is from the book of Revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, see, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. At the Last Supper, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so I now say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. So what should we talk about this morning? Should we talk about Peter's marvelous vision that he had while he's in a trance that clearly convicts him that there is in God no partiality? Should we talk about the outsider, the Gentile, receiving the Holy Spirit inexplicably? That's not supposed to happen. This whole way thing that we're on is supposed to be a Jewish messianic movement. Those people don't know Yahweh. How is it that they're getting the Holy Spirit? Should we talk about that? Should we talk about the new heaven and new earth? No weeping, no mourning. Waters from the river of life. Should we talk about that? That incredible visionary promise of a world reconciled to God. Should we talk about that heartbreaking moment in the upper room as Jesus is being betrayed? And it is in that very act of betrayal that he is glorified and God is glorified. And it's from that moment that Jesus gives a new commandment, love as I have loved you. Or as the, as the ancient church would describe, God poured God's self out, taking on our very nature. To live and die as one of us. A new commandment to love. Should we talk about that? Should we talk about the grim reality that if not this past week, next week, we will pass one million COVID deaths in the United States? You want me to put that in perspective for you? That is more people than have died of AIDS in the last 40 years. That's more, that's more people, that's more that's more than all the military personnel killed, all the military personnel, American military personnel killed in all of our combat in the 20th and 21st centuries combined. The only thing that even comes close is a civil war where they estimate 620 to 650. This makes COVID over the last 26 months the deadliest event in American history. Should we talk about that? Should we talk about the fact that we are not collectively grieving as a nation? A million people dead that should still be here. And that's not even including kind of the collateral deaths of people who really couldn't get the critical care they needed for other maladies. It's funny, there's a couple different soci sociologists that I read. One of them is a demographic specialist, and one of the things that he says is, in large measure, COVID deaths are invisible to us. We might know a friend of a friend 
or our cousin's next door neighbor. But the isolation of the pandemic has actually decreased our intimate support systems. And what they mean by that is those people in your life with whom you have confidence, who you really are able to be yourself with, that you don't do any of the veneer. On average, and of course this goes up and down depending on age, depending on ethnicity, but nine people. That's what the pandemic has done. The isolation of the pandemic has shrunk. And so there are nine million intimates who have someone who's left an empty chair at the dinner table. And we're not collectively grieving. We're not collectively weeping. Should we talk about the conspiracy theory of white replacement theory? An 18-year-old with an AR-15, a body armor, and a helmet camera Walk, drove 200 miles and walked into a grocery store in a low-income black neighborhood in Buffalo, New York, and just started shooting. And he live-streamed it on the internet. How are children getting radicalized like that? How do radicalized children have access to such deadly force? How do we as a community, how do we as a nation deal with this? Should we talk about that? We have a lot to talk about, don't we? And most of it's hard. Most of it's hard because whether it is Peter getting up and going because the Holy Spirit told him and the Holy Spirit told him to see no distinction we see distinctions, don't we? Can you imagine that visionary promise of a time and place where sorrow and weeping and mourning will be no more? That's hard. And most of the time we read the Revelation to John and just scratch our heads because it's such a hard book to read and it's filled with so many Old Testament allusions and we just can't follow along and it's beyond our imagination's grasp. By this, people will know that you are my disciples that you love one another as I have loved you, that you empty yourselves out. We don't do that. We just don't. I mean, we do our best. We buy extra food at the grocery store and drop it in the box for lamb basket. We pop off the can tabs to help Ronald McDonald House raise money. We say our prayers, we sing our hymns, we humbly walk forward trusting that God will feed us and sustain us. We do our best. But somehow, we fail in all of it. There's a reason why every year, we have to go through certain cycles in the life of the church. There's a reason why we have to take a time and prepare for God to be with us. There's a reason why we have a season of repentance and fasting so that we come to grips 
more deeply with how much we actually need the resurrection. There's a reason why we go through these cycles, and the reason we got, go through these cycles is we need to be reminded of the ways in which we need to work to participate in God's life in this world. Not God's life in this room. Not God's life in our homes. Not God's life among our nearest and dearest, but how God is working in this world. We go through these cycles so that we can better discern more willingly participate in the work that God is doing. So tell me, what's God doing in the deadliest event of American history? Can we sort that at all? Has it made us more humble? Has it made us more curious about way, the ways in which we can better safeguard ourselves and others? Has it made us more willing and more generous to sacrifice some little inconvenient freedoms for the sake of others' safety? Has it done that? Maybe in fits and starts? Maybe. How is God working in the world? What is God doing in response to the continued racial violence that we see time and time again? What are we learning from that? How do we learn to talk among our friends, among our neighbors, among, with strangers in the grocery store about God saying, make no distinction between them and you. Have we learned any better? Have we learned any more deeply to love one another and to proclaim that when the rhetoric becomes hateful and divisive and frightening and violent? Have we learned any more? Have we been touched any more deeply? Can we more compassionately see the fear and the suffering and the trauma of generation after generation after generation? You know, one of the funny things, and I need to qualify this, when calling the COVID pandemic the deadliest event in American history. One of these sociologists writes that even writing that has racial implications because it doesn't acknowledge the impact of Western Europeans on the native peoples of the Americas and the exploration and conquest of these continents. As soon as we write that, we're forgetting that this wasn't an empty place when we showed up. We have a lot of hard things to talk about, don't we? And sermons are not an occasion for dialogue and discussion, but sermons are an occasion to raise the topics. To raise the issues that we need to sit with one another in prayer and talk about. Whether it's our difficulty in not seeing the distinction between us and them, whether it is our difficulty of really imagining and trusting that visionary promise of a world reconciled to God, whether it is our difficulty in loving, our stinginess and compassion. Whether it is 
the fraught realities that surround us in this world. We have a lot to talk about. Because we really can't make an impact that changes anything about our society until we have come to grips with ourselves. Until we have come to grips with ourselves as beloved, redeemed children of God who walk in this world among other beloved, redeemed children of God. Beloved, redeemed children of God who may not know that's true. May only know fear. May only know suffering. May only know trauma. May only know violence. We need to come to grips with who we are so that we can help those who surround us every day see themselves as beloved, as redeemed, as forgiven, as saved. We need to come to grips with ourselves so that we can proclaim by word and example who they are. If you would, please stand. And turning to page 358, join with me in affirming our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one the holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People. Sisters and brothers, let us pray the name of the Lord. The promise of God are trustworthy and true. So let us pray. And as I say, loving God, you respond, make all things new. Heavenly Father, your Son Jesus commands us to love one another as he loves us. Help us to do as he commands. Give your church the will to seek and serve Christ in all persons. Loving God, make all things new. Gracious God, you bless the world in your incarnation. Come and make your home with us. Establish your reign of peace on earth as in heaven. And congregation, please add your thanksgivings. Loving God, make all things new. Gracious Lord, 
you created the heavens and earth and all that is therein. At your command, all things come into being. Give us ears to hear the praise coming forth from the worlds. May our voices join the song of creation. Loving God, make all things new. Grant, O oh God, that our city might become more like your heavenly city. Banish from our borders the pain of violence and addiction, abuse and hatred. Loving God, make all things new. Mighty God, wipe every tear from the eyes of your children. Come with healing. Come with strength. Come to your people. And please add your petitions. Loving God, make all things new. Alpha and Omega, we long for the day when you will make all things new. We long for the day when death will be no more, when mourning and crying and pain will be no more. We trust in the power of your love. Lead us in the way of everlasting life. Loving God, make all things new. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another in the name of the Lord. Please be seated for the announcements. And I won't complain about announcements like I did last week. Anyway, um, good morning, welcome. It's so good to have all of you here, those who are here with us in person, those who are joining us online. Um, I remind everyone of our 6.30 um, Bible study and discussion group on Monday evenings. It's uh, on Zoom. We would love to see anyone who has that time available to join us. It's a faithful little group, um, curious and thoughtful and um, I think you would find the discussions lively and edifying. So I commend that time to you. Uh, the second thing that I want to point out is um, Kathy Dyer has um, a neighbor who um, has started a craft project. She's making little stuffed bunnies. She wants to donate them to um, any manner of uh, child care services. Um, so. One of the things we've talked about a couple things we've talked about children's hospital we've talked about ronald mcdonald house um i'm curious about how um, foster kids get um administered here in henrico county and i'll figure that out but if y'all have any other ideas of places where um that this kind of gift would be um appreciated um please let kathy know um kathy would also say um, bring your can tabs, bring your can tabs, bring your can tabs. Um, I remind you of that. I remind you that we are always collecting food for Lamb's Basket. Those of you who may feel um, uncomfortable um, coming to church on Sundays, you're just not, you just don't feel quite safe enough yet. I remind you that the building is open from about 8.30 until about 5 every day during the week. You can come by and drop off food then. Um, the Cindy Reynolds, can I just use the code and say the, the Cindy Reynolds announcement? Yeah. <laughs> right. All right. So the Cindy Reynolds announcement, um, is there anything else for the good of the cause? If not walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. 
Continue with the Eucharistic prayer found on page 367. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. The calling of Israel to be your people in your word spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the, power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. This is a prayer of spiritual communion, prayed in solidarity with those who are joining us online. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you together with all your faithful people gathered around every altar of your church, and I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
body of Christ to prayer. 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 Our post-communion prayer is found on page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this earthly pilgrimage with us. So be swift to love and make haste to do kindness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 529. Alleluia, alleluia, go in peace to love and serve the Lord.